Hello, this is Holly, previously Stuart, currently Overmeyer, and I am going to discuss the Watsons Go to Birmingham Civil Rights Unit that my sixth grade literacy class did last year, and some of the themes from the book, some of the lessons learned from the Civil Rights Movement, and how students have created a multimedia project and some of the objectives that were addressed in that project. So to start with, the novel, The Watsons Go to Birmingham, was written by Christopher Paul Curtis. And it, the setting is 1963 during the US Civil Rights Movement. It was published in 1995. And this is a picture of the book cover. And this is a picture of the protagonist. And his name is Kenny, and he is 10 years old. And this is the um, notorious brown bomber car that's referred to several times in the book. And what I love about this book is that it's really easy for adolescents to relate to. It's written with a lot of um, power, thought, reflection, but also a lot of humor. So um, I really like that. Um, also, um, there is, since my the school that I teach at, Irwin Middle School um, in Loveland, Colorado, uses the IB um, model for our classes. We're an IB World School. We create guiding questions for each unit. And I really wanted students to think about how does the past influence the present and the future. And that is addressed throughout the unit as well as in the final project. So this, these are some of, that coming up are some of the um, research questions students formulate themselves. Um, but this is one of the main research questions that I do give them, and it's an objective for the project. How did the civil rights movement in the U.S. affect our nation's history, and how does it reflect in our current daily lives? So what are some patterns that we've seen in, during the civil rights movement, um, and how have they recurred um, in our history, and how is it reflected in our daily lives? Because there's still racism, there's still prejudice, um, there are still those issues, what gains have been made in the civil rights movement, and um, what are some things that could still be improved, and what can we learn from it? Because there's that quote, and I don't remember who said it, but if we don't are not, are not aware of history, we are doomed to repeat it, which I think is very poignant and powerful and relative to this. And this is a, down here is a form poem. Um, and I have students create some form poems. This is an example from the form poem website, pretty snazzy. It's called Tagzito, um, odd name for a website that creates form poems, but hey, whatever. But um, this is just a sample that I show the students and um, it actually, you choose your format and it um, puts it into a really cool form with lots of colors. And as you can see throughout the poem are words that have to do with Martin Luther King, the civil rights movement, um, Memphis, some things that happened um, um, in the South, some locations, boycott, etc. Okay, um, so some other sample research questions would be, um, what was the American civil rights movement? We have to start there. How did it affect African Americans and all citizens living in the U.S. at the time? Because I think um, that it affected everyone and actually worldwide, and we do address that. Who are some key figures and events during the Civil Rights Movement? And I do have students do some background research to figure out um, people involved, events that occurred um, that were really monumental in the civil rights movement. And also, it's not on here, but locations. Um, and how did the civil rights movement affect our nation's history and how does it reflect in our current daily lives, which I had gone over previously. Um, some of the objectives for the project. Um, I want students to really um, work on collaboration and I have them do a reflection at the end of the unit about their role in the group, what that was, how it went, and I also have students evaluate them, the, well themselves and also their um, 
their group mates because that's going to be a big part of the grade, not just the final project. Um, but I'm going to have them work in a group of up to three peers, so four to a group. They're going to choose an event, person, or location which played a strong role in this U.S. civil rights movement. And the way that I did that last year that I think worked really well is I just had some photos of some events, people, and location. Um, from the Library of Congress website and I gave them the links and I, I cut and pasted the pictures and they could, if they saw a picture that caught their eye, they could reference it in the Library of Congress and, and start there for their research and figure out what that picture was, what was happening there, why did they choose it, why did it, and what truly what is that a picture a reflection of. So they can then start their research from there and then they'll formulate their research questions. Um, so uh, also, um, I really wanted them to focus on how did this person, event, or location strongly impact the civil rights movement. They needed to answer that as their main research question, though I did want, to, want them to formulate some of their own. Um, and how did it impact not just the nation, but lives of many people around the world. And I really wanted them, them to learn because um, the persuasive writing unit was going to um, be taught after this unit. So we talked about some of the beginning techniques of persuasion. Persuade the class that your research topic is a key element. So how can you prove that um, this was a pivotal um, person event or location in the civil rights movement? So we talked about that as well.